welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to use your IDE in order to learn data structures. One of the biggest things I feel like beginners forget or don't take advantage of is their IDE. For example, let's say I wanted to create a stack. Here, just typing out stack, I can hit enter and it automatically imports the thing I need. In this case, java.util.stack. So I didn't have to add an extra library in order to get access to this functionality. It's part of the Java built-in standard library. Another thing I could do is instead of hitting enter and immediately importing it, we're gonna create a stack of integers call it stacky, we'll do new stack, and I can go option enter, and this will import it for me. This is something you're not gonna get with your regular code editor, and we're ready to go. Now, one of the most common things if you're studying computer science and maybe you're in college, maybe you're in high school, a common task is to implement the data structures, and so create stack from scratch. And so instead of using this built-in data structure, you would implement it as your homework or your assignment. Now, with the stack, we can do stacky.push, we can push two, say we push five, and then we'll pop. That assignment might be creating that stack object and then implementing the push and pop methods. A little tip is you can actually see the source code for this data structure you're using or this stack that's coming from java.util.stack. To do that, we do command click. So command click on Mac, it might be control click on Windows. But this brings me directly to the source code for a stack. We have the empty stack constructor, so that is what we used right here. So if I click into this, it brings me directly to the constructor or the implementation of the method that's being called. We can see that when we push an item, if I click into that, it brings me directly to the push implementation inside of the stack class. So if your assignment is to implement this method, you could paraphrase the things that are happening here. Now this is a little complex and it can be kind of intimidating to look at all of this source code, but you can navigate it by looking at these individual methods. So here we have this push, it calls this method called add element, and then it returns the item that was pushed on to the stack. The E here represents generics, and so it could be an integer, it could be any object, because you can create a stack of any object, whether it's pancakes, whether it's booleans, characters, strings, a custom person object, whatever you want, you can create a stack out of it. So it's just saying, whatever we push onto the stack, that same data type we're gonna return. But let's say I'm looking at this implementation and I wanna understand it better. One thing you can do is continue to click on to add element and see what this is doing. So this is something that lives in the vector class. And so if we go back to stack, we see that the stack extends vector. And so the stack class inherits things from the vector class. So it gets some functionality for free from the vector class. Looking at this add element implementation, we increment a counter and then we add the element to the vector, or to our stack. And if we wanna know more information, there's this long comment about what exactly this method does. If I wasn't sure what mod count meant, I click into that and I get this huge thing about what the mod count stands for. And so here it stands for the number of times this list has been structurally modified. And so this has to do with the fact that this add element thing is synchronized and so we can ignore that for now. But again, we can dig deeper into the add implementation. We could go and click into these to see what the element data and element count is, and then see what is actually going on behind the scenes. So this vector class is really built on an object array. That's the base of it, and these methods do various things to that array in order to add or remove or search for items in the data structure. Now, it can be a little weird to just click through everything, think you're understanding it and what's happening, but another thing you can do is use your debugger. So let's say I click into the push method, I click into add method, we'll put a breakpoint here in mod count, we'll put a breakpoint here at that if statement and we'll run the code. This will allow us to analyze what the values of each item are during the execution. So let's run this in debug mode. Bug. And here we stopped at the add element mod count. So it went and created our stack, stacky, then it is trying to push on the item two, which we see as our object here, that value two. Currently the stack is empty, and so that's why the mod count is zero, because we haven't made any modifications to the stack. 
the element count is zero, there's nothing in the data structure. Remember that stack constructor did nothing. It just created an object, but it didn't initialize any properties or anything like that. So we can click on this to go back to that moment in the execution. And we can use this debugger to walk through the method implementation. So we'll click step over here. Now we've incremented the mod count so that plus one, this is our first modification to the list. We're gonna step into the add method where we hit this next breakpoint. Here, if we hover over the element data.length, we see that it's 10, S is zero, and so therefore we do not need to grow the list. And so this has to do with making the array bigger if we couldn't add this element. So in this case, the array that actually holds the stack data or the vector data is a big enough size in order for us to add elements. So we're good to go there. If we step over, we'll hit 783. S is zero, so it's putting two at that index zero in the array because our stack is really a vector that's really represented by an array. Then we'll click next. Our element count, we just added an element to the list and so that will be incremented as well. We'll go to the next line. We have one element in our list. Our element data has the elements it has, an, it's an object 10 array, meaning it has 10 slots in the array. And at that first index, we have the integer two. Now maybe you're thinking, why did we have to make this an integer? Why couldn't I have just done something like that? And it's because of this core object array. The fact that an object requires a reference, it's a reference type, not a primitive type, an int is a primitive type. Because of that, that's why we have to make this two an integer because you can't put an int into an object array. You have to put the integer object into the object array. So let's continue on, we'll click next, we'll click next. Then we just return the item. We were able to add the element using that method inside of the vector class. And so we're done. We just return the item, we'll click next, and then we'll do the same thing with five. So we'll step over that. And because we have this breakpoint here, it still stops at this add element portion. And so it went through this, we called add element. Now we're here, mod count is one, we're about to increment it, so we'll step over that. Now the mod count is two, this is the second time we're modifying the list. The object we want to add is an integer that is five. We'll step into this where we hit that other breakpoint where the element data is still 10 because we did not modify the size of the interior object array that's actually keeping track of things. All we did previously was add an element at a specific spot. We want to add this at index one. And if we go back to that add element here, that element count, this is the second item we're adding to the stack, but it's at that first index. And so because we're able to insert it at that index, meaning the array is big enough to take in this extra element, we'll set it. So we'll click the next, we'll click next again. Now we have not only two in this array, but we also have five. Then we increment the element count, we'll click next. We've added the item, so we're done with this. We were able to add the item, so we'll click next. Great, so now we'll step over this. We're on to stack.pop. So what makes this actually a stack? In the vector class, everything we keep track of is an array. So here, when we add this item, we're adding it at this specific indice and it kind of operates like an array. Well, the business logic that's on top of the vector class makes this a stack. And so that business logic is in the stacky class. So let's take a look. Here we grab the size of the stack using a size method that actually lives in the vector class and so it's returning that element count that we saw before. We'll look at the next thing. Here it looks like we peak and we'll return that element that's at the length minus one where that length is two minus one would be that index one and so if we look at element at, here we have some error handling, but it will return the element data that's at that index. In this case, element data at that index, which would be one. So we should get five back from that peak, and that's what we see in object. Then we remove the element. We're gonna force step ourselves into this remove element at. This index, which is index one, is less than the element count, so we won't hit this error handling here. We'll step over that. Here the index is valid at one and so we continue to go on. Here, the element count, which is two, minus the index, which is one, gives us one minus one, 
is zero. This makes J zero, so this will also be false. We don't have to do any of that. This is another modification to the list, so we increment that. We're about to remove the item, so we subtract from that element count. Then we actually remove the item when we set our array, which contains currently two and five. We set that item at index one, which is our element count one, equal to null. So we'll click next, exit out of this function. Now we only have two in our array or in our stack. We've popped off the value at five. That logic lived in the stack class where we removed this element at length minus one. So these are all things you have access to in the source code. So if there's ever something new that's confusing or you don't know what to do or you're not sure what it's doing behind the scenes, using the debugger along with clicking into these different methods and seeing what's going on can really help develop your knowledge of Java or whatever programming language you're using. Reading these comments, also super helpful so you know the general gist of what's going on. For me, this is easier than reading the documentation when I'm learning something new, usually I'll follow a tutorial and then click into whatever functionality is new or something I'm unfamiliar with. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new with this lesson and you don't always have to look at the documentation. There's a lot already in your computer. We used to stack here, but if you want to learn more about data structures, try doing this exercise with an array list, a linked list, a hash map, a hash set. Another thing you can do is check out my link LinkedIn learning course. It's Programming Foundations Data Structures and we go from those ones and zeros and how data is stored on your computer all the way up to hash-based data structures. If you're interested in that, LinkedIn Learning down in the description and they recently gave me some promo codes that I'll be giving out. That's super exciting. Everyone loves free stuff. If you're interested in winning a promo code, it's three months of LinkedIn Learning for free and all you have to do is follow me on LinkedIn, follow me on Instagram, subscribe here, and leave a comment on this video. Thanks again for watching and happy coding.